My name is Cara Lee, AKA Scarlet Harley. I have that moniker because I am a sex worker rights advocate. And I've been a sex worker mm, since the late 70s when I moved to San Francisco. I was born in Jackson Heights, Queens. I was a very good girl. I uh, went to graduate school in creative writing and I studied with Ann Sexton the, the semester that she killed herself. And I didn't know what to do with this career as a poet. That's what I was trying to be. I always knew I was an artist, a life artist, and a political artist. I was just looking to have an interesting life. I was very romantic about the beat poets. So anyway, I moved to San Francisco, and I really wasn't any kind of bad girl before, but I needed money. So in San Francisco, I saw those signs, sex, massage, girls. And I went down to a massage parlor, and I, you know, I knew it was sex because, well, they weren't selling ambiance. They didn't tell me what to do. They sent me in with a regular and da-da, I did it. $35 for a blow job. It was the quickest $35 I ever made. I was so happy. I understood that San Francisco was, was the center of, of, of leftist politics, of hippie politics, of political art. That was just about the time that Harvey Milk was murdered, and I remember the people coming out on the street, and I, I was completely involved in, in sex work politics. I would go out and I would just try to ex be on the front lines in the battle of the sexes, and then I'd write about it like Gloria Steinem. I was a feminist, too, and that kind of cut both ways, because I knew that, um, a woman had never come out as a working prostitute before. Okay, could you just wait? I just, my lipstick. Gorgeous, okay. So, let me tell you how I first met Gilbert. I started a little group called the Whores of Babylon, and it was a pagan anarchist community and all these sexy women. And we wanted to go to Feinstein's house because you know, this was the year that the Pope was coming to town, and Diane Feinstein certainly didn't have any real respect for the queer community. And, you know, after the murder of Milk, we were sensitive to every single thing she did. So I organized a, a very nice group of, of women. And there was Gilbert, and he was there with Sadie and sisters in these, the best nun costumes I've ever seen. He looked so fabulous, and right away he just came up to me, and it was like, he, he just, he said, oh, we're going to be friends, and here, I'll make you a costume. So I, I was so excited to meet him, and I, I knew right away also that he was going to be a partner for me, and I guess he knew right away too. And, and then and we collaborated for so many years and, and told, you know, I mean, we were besties and we spent so much time together. I think Gilbert's made, you know, 20, 30 or so costumes for me. He would, whenever I needed anything, I was on the Arsenio Hall show, I was on Nightline. He would just like whip out a dress. Uh, protests at City Hall, oh, I, I was dressed up for the French Revolution. So Gilbert Baker lived with Dennis Perone for years and years and years. And he always had a beautiful space in Dennis's beautiful house. He'd invite me over and, oh, I mean, I guess two or three times a week. And, and we at his apartment, oh, he'd always have the Rolling Stones blaring.
around dinner, we would have long talks about the politics in San Francisco, sex worker rights politics, about marijuana politics, and about queer identity and, and, and queer rights. These political analyses were interwoven, and I felt that I was in the, uh, the, one of the most interesting and intricate intellectual and political salons that I could imagine. I had already started documenting all the arts around me and all the projects I'd been doing, so right away I pulled out the camera and we would just talk for hours and I would interview him and in casual conversations and talking about his politics and his art and, and what he wanted, what he hoped for for the future of the gay community. And I think that his vision, his vision of the art scene and of uh, politics was always central. It's like he always carried this huge vision of the world and himself as an artist and his friends in the art that they were creating. It's like, that was him. There wasn't any other separate personal life. Uh, he was completely the expression of the queer community as a political artist. When I look at media reports and discussions of Gilbert, I don't necessarily see that aspect emphasized, that he was a, a political artist. And I, 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 it's so clear that his art was always strategic. That's something that uh, one doesn't see in too many artists. And I would like to see his work recognized in that context, but also I would like him to be able, you know, his legacy to also bring forth the value of political artists in our society. Gilbert was, was always on the front lines, always fighting as a political voice. You know, most famously, Gilbert was actually arrested on the Golden Gate Bridge protesting the Pope. He was wearing his best American flag dress. It was like it showed off his gorgeous shoulders, low cuts, so oh, beautiful. Very brave to actually close down traffic on the bridge. The government doesn't like that when you go to when you target the bridges. Gilbert knew. Gilbert always knew what they didn't like and he would always challenge. He wasn't afraid at all. He didn't seem to have any fear. The project that Gilbert created that inspired me the most and, and made me laugh the most was Pink Jesus. We all dressed up in sort of matching outfit. It was Sadie and Gilbert and I, and we waited in the corner and hid for when the parade would pass and nobody knew what we were gonna do and we knew that they would be a little bit mad and we were hoping oh, to get, as Gilbert would always say, fresh ink. So the parade was coming our way and we ran out right in front of the entire parade and I pulled down my blouse and exposed myself and Gilbert was was on the cross as Pink Jesus, martyrs for art. Oh, and there was nothing anybody could do about it. We made quite a splash. As Pink Jesus, he was directly addressing the oppression of the Catholic Church. 
and of Christian churches in general, and for the stigma on the gay society and the, uh, the op oppression of gay people through the ages. I think that was really at his center. And it was only a few months after that that we heard that Larry Lee, a Christian televangelist, who uh, said that he was leading an army for spiritual warfare, and it was against gay people, and he was coming to San Francisco. Well, here's the headline. Local gays plan rally against televangelist prayer Ooh. army. 10,000 warriors want to save San Francisco. So Gilbert said, uh-uh, we're, we're not going to let that happen. We have to challenge the, the ch these churches that every time they do make a stand. We joined up with Ghost, grand homosexual outrage against sickening televangelists. And the star of the action was Gilbert Baker as Pink Jesus. Be gone! May it be gone! It's the whole point of it. It's a, like a cartoon. It's like a living political cartoon. I'm trying to shock them. I was really in love with Gilbert. I, I'm not the only one. Um, you know, Gilbert had really close relationships with women, serially. He just, it was, I could tell when I met them after, um, after it, well, when he moved to New York and I, I would meet the next woman that he was with and the, all these women and they just worshiped him and he was so sweet to them and just, you know, He'd pay for the costumes when he'd seen me. He'd buy dinner. He was so generous. I mean, he just couldn't do enough for me. I was just devastated when he moved. But he certainly came into his own. To see his work at MoMA, he was so proud. And, and so much happened to him in New York. And I mean, that's where his, his career coalesced. And I think that, that he always knew what the next step was in his work. I mean, he was creating all the time. I think he'd come back for almost every parade. And he'd call us all up and we'd, he'd make more costumes for us. And he'd have people carrying flags and unrolling huge banners. And so it, it was wonderful. You know, I, I don't remember how I found out, but someone told us Gilbert had a stroke and Okay, I know that Gilbert used to talk about his heart, and I mean, but you know, he was so strong. He could walk miles and in huge heels. It was really amazing how he recuperated though, how dedicated he was to his recuperation and recovery, and he worked so hard at it. Do I have to tell you that he was devastated by Trump? Even to the last days, he was making amazing banners to challenge the status quo. When I went to visit him in New York, and it was the December before he died, and I spent a lot of time with him, and and I had just been diagnosed with cancer a while back, and to be with him there when he had that vulnerability and I did, I mean, we got to talk about getting older and having these various disabilities, and 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 Gilbert was so loving and. And oh, I don't want to just be comforting myself, but I do feel like he was brave about death. He was, um, he looked forward to everything he could do in his work and he felt very confident about his future. But at the same time, I felt like he was, he's, he's always, and he was giving himself up to the universe. And in a lot of ways, I felt like he did l l let the universe have its way with him. When I heard that he died in his sleep, I was so glad that it wasn't in a scary, horrible way and that it was in a, a peaceful way. And I... <sighs> it is a little bit hard to talk about. I mean, you know, somebody dies you, 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 that you're close to, there's, I have so many feelings, I, I can't believe he's not there, I always, I mean, I, 
when we talk about Gilbert, I feel like we bring him to life. And I just feel like he is there. And he was always a very magical person anyway. And it's hard to believe that the world doesn't have Gilbert anymore.